Hello, hello, hello. I am the Linux Mensch. Today I'm going to do an install of Arch Linux using the January 1st, 2024 ISO using the automated installer. And I'm going to install all my favorite apps and window managers and so forth. It's going to be a full installation. So let's get to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is change the font. That font here dash 132b i'm going to clear the screen and i'm going to go into arch install and it's just going to load up their automatic installer and i'm going to go into mirrors and i'm using my arrow keys to go up and down i'm going to go mirror region and i'm going to use my arrow keys to go down to canada and use my space part to put an asterisk there then I'm going to use my space bar to go back. And I'm going to go to locales. And I'm going to leave it to keyboard on English. But I'm going to go down to locale language. And I'm going to go up, use my arrow keys to go up to English Canada. English CA for Canada. And I'm going to hit enter. Then I'm going to go back, use my arrow keys and go back. Now, disk configuration. I'm going to use best effort. And of course, this first one is my ISO that I'm doing my install from. So I'm going to use the arrow key to go down. And this is my 42 gig hard drive. I'm going to use the space power and put an asterisk there and enter. And I'm going to use my arrow keys to go to ext4 because that's the one I always use. Would you like to create a separate partition for home? I'm going to say no. Now at this part, you can encrypt a disk. Uh, I'm not going to go through disk encryption because this is a virtual machine. I don't need it to be encrypted. But if you're concerned about your computer getting stolen, and especially if it's a laptop that you take into the car and take to school or to work with you, you should encrypt it. I'm not going to go through that today. I've gone through that in past videos with this automated installer and also manually. So I'm going to skip disk encryption. I'm going to go to bootloader. I'm going to leave it at and grub. Swap is set for true, but I don't like swap, so I'm just going to say no. Host name is Arch Linux. I'm going to call this Arch Auto. And the host name you can change after the fact anyways. Root password is... I'm going to put a root password in. Now it's telling me that the password is very weak, but I don't care because it's a virtual machine. And I have to re-enter it. And that's done. User account, you can set up now, but I'm going to do it after the fact. Now profile, I don't use, but I'm going to quickly show you it. Profile is this. You can set type. And it gives you the option of installing a desktop, a minimal server, a minimal or a server and so forth. So let's go into desktop and you can click on use your asterisk, use your arrow keys to go up and down and you can tell it and you can tell it to do GNOME, Hyperlam, i3, KDE, LXQT, Mate, Qtile, Sway, EXE4, Awesome, BSPWM, Budgie, Cinnamon, Cutefish, Deepen, Enlightenment, and so forth. And now I think, I think I'm circling. So if you put an asterisk in one, one or more of these, it's going to install, automatically install that desktop environment and window manager for you. But I don't use that because I do all this after the fact with my install script. So I'm going to escape out of there. And I'm going to go back. So just to make sure I put nothing in profile, you can see there's nothing in there. And also you could make the user account. I think I already said that, but I always make the user. And if you go in here to make the user account, it's going to add a user for you and you're going to put the password in here. But I always do that after the fact. So I'm going to cancel out of there. And audio, you can do it now, but I do it after the fact. Kernel, I'm going to change this. I'm going to unclick this. And I'm going to do the LTS. Okay, and of course you can keep more, more than one clicked on at a time.
Okay, so I'm gonna do that one. Additional packages, I always do at this point, I always do vim get and term terminus font. So vim and terminus font are on the ISO, but they don't automatically go into your install. And I use vim because I like vim, I don't like nano. And terminus font is so I can change the font in the TTY. And get, well, I install git because I'm going to download my uh, all my configuration files from my GitLab repository and finish the install. So I'm going to add those. And it's verifying that they exist. And you can go back, right? And you can see now at the bottom, I'm installing vim, git, and terminus font. So I'm just doing a base installation. And then after the fact, I'm going to install all my stuff in this video. So network configuration, you have to do that or else you won't be able to, when you log into your system, you won't have any internet access. You won't be able to download or install programs and your web browser won't work. Well, the web browser will open up, but you won't have access to the internet. So I'm gonna click on, I always use network manager. So now we can see network manager is done. Let's go to time zone. Let's do a slash Canada. Use my arrow keys to go to Eastern. I clicked on Kennedy Eastern and automatic time sync is true. Optional repositories, I don't need any of those. I'm not going to save the configuration and I'm going to click on install. And I hit enter. And now it's going through the installation process. This is probably going to take uh, at the most five minutes. So I'm going to pause the video and come back. So don't go away. Well, finished. Now, I'd say that took about two and a half to three minutes. It didn't take long. It was pretty quick. I never even got out of my chair while I was doing it. So, would you like to shoot into the newly created installation? Yes is the default, but I'm going to say no. I'm going to use my arrow keys to go to no. I'm going to hit enter. And the installation completed without any errors. You may now reboot. Okay, so I'm going to type in reboot. And it's booting into a base system because I didn't tell the system to install any desktop environment or anything. And I'm going to make it full screen. So we're at the TTY. What I'm going to do is type in root. And I'm going to put my roots password in. And I'm going to do set font here dash 132B. And I'm going to do user add dash m bench password without the O and without the R mench. And I'm going to give mench a password. I'm going to retype it. And I'm going to do vim etsy bench. Sorry. Vim etsy sudoers and i'm going to scan down and i'm going to give mench uh, sudo privileges and normally uh, most distributions and most people teaching you how to use arch would make mench part of the wheel group and then uncomment this line here i don't do it that way i just copy this and i delete the root and i type in mench so i'm making mench all, all i'm giving mench all privileges that's all I do. Works just the same as the other one. Whoops. Let's save it the right way. And let's clear the screen. Now, what I'm going to do is log out. And I'm going to log in as Mitch. I'm going to put his password in. And I'm going to do, let's just do an ls-8. So there's no config folder. So I'm going to make dir.config. Then I'm going to clear the screen. I'm going to do get clone https colon slash slash get lab.com slash artibus one slash mench dot get. And this command is in the show notes of all my videos. And I'm going to hit enter and I'm cloning my directory from GitLab repository. Now I'm going to clear the screen. I'm going to cd into mench 
I'm going to ls it. And on the far left, you see there's an arch folder. So I'm going to cd into arch. And I'm going to ls it. And on the, in the left column, one, two, three, four down, there's an auto app file. So I'm going to vim into the auto app file. And these are the files that I download into my system. It has uh, files for music, videos. Uh, there's no videos in here, just the files to run your videos and the apps to run your videos. It has the Cinnamon Desktop, the Awesome Window Manager, the Qtile Window Manager, Firefox, your Firefox Ad Blocker, UBlock Origin, uh, and so forth. And there's about 30 apps in here. Actually, there's about 70. And you can just go down. Now, if you're looking at this a long time ago, it used to be in paragraph form, but a person did a favor for me and contributed to my GitLab repository and took that big paragraph of applications and made it into column form in alphabetical order. So it's easy to read. It's in alphabetical order and you can see everything that you'll be downloading if you use this file. So I'm going to run this file. This file has everything I want in it. So I'm going to clear the screen and I'm going to do dot slash auto. I'm going to put my password in. I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to hit enter again. And it's downloading almost 900 megabytes. So it's downloading 632 packages. This is going to take a few minutes. And I'm going to pause the video and come back. So don't go away. That took about uh, two or three minutes, less than five. I never got out of my chair. I'm going to clear the screen. And I'm going to ls it again. Now, if you see on the uh, far right, just a little, maybe around halfway down, maybe just a little past halfway down, right under the resub, there's a run configs file. So I'm going to vim into there just to show you what's in here. And this is going to copy some wallpaper and configure it. It's going to copy three wallpapers and some of my configuration files into the place where I want them to be. It's going to set up light DM and it's going to set up my firewall. So if you go to the bottom here, it's going to set up the firewall. So I'm going to get out of there. I'm going to clear the screen and I'm going to do slash period slash run. Now you don't have to do this, but I do this and that's done. Now I'm going to clear the screen and I'm going to CD out of there. I'm going to Zesh. Now Arch installs the bash shell by default, but I installed Zesh and that when I installed all those apps, Zesh got installed. And when I just ran that last executable file, run configs, it installed my Zesh configuration file. So let's see if it's working. And it is. Now let's go into root and see if Zesh is working for root. So I'm going to put root's password in and I'm going to type in Zesh. And Zesh is working for root. So now that I know Zesh is working for root and for mench, I'm going to make Zesh the default shell. So I'm going to vim into Etsy. Password without the O and without the R. And on the first line, now you have to be very careful when you're in this uh, file. Because if you mess something up in this file, you won't be able to log into your system. You won't have to do a reinstall. There is a way to log onto the system with the live ISO and fix it if you mess it up. But you have to know how to do it. So I'm going to go to the end of this line. And I'm going to delete bash. I'm going to put Zesh in there. So I'm making Zesh the default shell for root. And then I'm going to do a search for mench. Now I'm on line 19 where mench is. I'm going to go to the end of that line. Delete bash and type in Zesh for mench. I'm making Zesh the default shell for mench. I'm going to save the file and get out of there. And now I'm going to reboot. I'm going to hit enter. And I'm rebooting into the system. It's going to bring me to, anyways, it brought me to LightDM, the login manager, or as it's probably referred to, the display manager. And now we have here this icon up here, and I have the Cinnamon desktop, Qtile, and Awesome. Now, the Awesome window manager and the Qtile window manager have my configuration file installed. Cinnamon, I don't have my own configuration file for Cinnamon. And when you install Cinnamon from Arch Linux, it's bare bones and it's really ugly, but it's easy to fix and easy to theme. 
because it's a user-friendly desktop environment and everything works in the GUI. And I've done many videos going through with the GUI how I like to set up my Cinnamon desktop. So I'm not going to do that today. So let's log into Awesome. Let's put my password in. Now we're in the Awesome Window Manager with my configuration file. Let's check HTOP. So we're running at 250 megabytes of RAM, actually 240. That's not bad. So in this virtual machine, I gave it four processors, four gigs of RAM, and no swap. And we're running at uh, 240 megabytes of RAM, not bad. Let's see if Firefox opens. I got uBlock Origin installed in my Firefox. You can see it right here. I have all kinds of files. I have Rhythmbox, I have uh, MPV player, Celluloid, which is another uh, video player. Everything in here, you need to have uh, the full Libra Office Suite is installed. Everything is here that you would need. So now I'm gonna quit out of there. And I'm gonna go into Qtile. Put my password in. And now we're in my Qtile. And Qtile doesn't work with the mouse, so I'm gonna do a mod key H is gonna bring up HTOP. And I'm running at 257 megabytes of RAM. And I'm gonna close that. And I'm gonna do mod key F for Firefox. And there you have Firefox. So that's it. In this video, I did a quick full install of Arch Linux using their automated installer from the January 1st, 2024 ISO. And I went through it quickly. I just wanted to see how fast I could do it. And it was a full install with all my favorite window managers, desktop environments, and apps. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I am the Lennox Mensch.